Hello, welcome back to Zelda the Minish Cap. In our last episode, we found out in order to get the wind element, we're going to need some new Pegasus boots. So we came up here, unlocked Lake Hylia, and hopefully today we'll be able to finish getting our Pegasus boots so we can move on to the main quest of this game. Going to be doing a little bit of collecting and side quests and stuff a little bit as well. Just because we haven't been up in this area yet, so I'm sure there's a few things to find. Hopefully some heart containers. It would be nice to get one more going. I also want to try and check in with, uh, what's his name, like Swift Blade or whatever to see if there's a new sword technique for us in this episode. I think since we've upgraded our sword and completed another dungeon, there should be something there, but we haven't been back yet to check. Just kind of checking out this new area to see if we missed anything. There's a gore on there, I don't know how to get to him though. Alright, we can't go through the house to get up there. Oh, we found a different part of the Minish Woods. Okay, so it looks like if we throw rupees in, we'll get a bigger wallet. I couldn't see this game robbing us. I'm pretty sure we'll get something cool if we do it. Yeah, we got a wallet upgrade. It'd be kind of funny if there was one of these fairy shrines that whatever you throw in, they just rob you. Alright, it doesn't look like we can do much else up here. <coughs> of course, our goal overall is to get something to wake up the cobbler who keeps falling asleep making shoes so he can finish our Pegasus boots. Uh, I keep hitting the wrong button when I'm trying to fuse these kin stones. Alright, that's that Goron we saw. Okay, so now he smashed his way in, but I still don't know how to get up there to him. That is so far away. Not sure if we want to go up there. Maybe at the end of the episode. Alright, 
Alright, so we gotta find Syrup's hut. Now we were up here earlier, we just didn't fly in the right direction, so we're going to have to go back and correct that. Yeah, cutting grass is so important in this game. They have all these seashells, kinstones hidden, that you gotta randomly find by cutting grass. Yeah, this is the part I didn't realize where I was supposed to fly the first time. Yeah, just like that, we got a seashell and a kinstone just by cutting grass. I feel like I'm missing stuff anywhere I don't cut grass. Okay, so this should wake up the cobbler to finish our boots. We just have to go to, back to Hyrule to uh, pick them up now. That way we should be able to get through the swamp with the new boots to uh, be able to get the wind element. Seems like we're basically trying to complete the four sword. Right now it's just the two sword. No, we don't want to go that way. I think we wanted to turn the other direction back there. Ah, oh, that's where that Goron went. Okay, so we gotta find him another Goron to smash through that wall and get in here. Okay, so we've unlocked a merchant who it seems like is going to sell kinstones in like the Hyrule market. I 
think this is a shortcut back, so we can pick up our boots at least. Yeah, okay, we're back in Hyrule Town, so we want to pick up our boots and we want to check out uh, Swift Blade. our mushroom and as always as low has to ruin the puzzle we're about to complete So he's finishing off our Pegasus boots. What button? It just says hold down the button to run. Do I have to equip them as an item? We'll have to put them on and race the mailman like Ocarina of Time. Alright, time to get possessed and learn a new sword technique. So now we won't have to pick up and throw pots anymore. We can just chop them. I think we can chop the rocks too, which will be helpful. I really don't back up Mount Cornell just for that tin stone piece, but I do kind of want to check out that cave we saw earlier up there uh, that had one of those four sword spots and we couldn't get through it. So I want to see if we can make any progress now. I think there was a couple. There was one where we got the Mount Cornell water and one like most of the way up Mount Cornell. It's been a while since we've been over here. I gotta remember the way up here. I don't think we want to go that way yet. I 
think this was it. Yeah, okay, we couldn't do anything here earlier, so maybe now we can. No, I can't walk on this, the, the floor thing, I guess. We gotta go off of it and around. I'm trying to place our guys like three or four squares apart. Hopefully that's enough. Alright, another heart container. So we just got another full heart. Alright, so this guy's claiming to be the Master Swordsman, not Swiftblade. Some sort of rivalry going on, but he's going to teach us a new technique. <laughs> you have to scream hi -ya for the technique to work. Alright, so rolling attack. Oh. So it's not like a screw attack where the blade sticks out and you roll through things. It's like you roll and then attack. I don't know how useful that'll be. I mean, maybe we need it to unlock something though. So there's still a kinstone piece up there. I think there was a guy at the top we could fuse kinstones with. Um, there's the chest that appeared. And there's a spot by the Mount Cornell water where we can use the four sword. We're gonna try and find our way back up. If we get too turned around here though, I'll probably just cut the video for now. This is just kind of some fun side questing before we uh, move on with the next element. Oh, we had that all the way pulled back. I guess that brick was in the way. Now we're gonna have to go around the slow way. I don't remember the way back to the wall we gotta climb. <coughs> I just remember that wall we climb has that chest on it. And at the top there was the guy who told us the hint about the bombs who wanted to fuse kinstone pieces. Okay, that was the shortcut. Alright, I think we're just going to cut the video here. So thanks for watching, and come back and see us in the next video of the Minish Cap.